In this video, we'll be taking a look at two more optical illusions. I actually got the idea for these illusions from Michael Bach's website, so I'll put a link to that below. Let's find out more. In this first illusion, we can see four coloured lines on a grey background, and we can see that the four lines appear to be moving around. As we look for a little bit longer, we can see more clearly that the lines appear to be organised into two pairs of parallel lines. The two pairs of lines seem to be moving independently of each other, but the lines in a pair appear to be moving in tandem. As one line moves upwards, so does the other line that makes up that pair. Now I'm going to add something to the picture and let's see what happens. I've now added four coloured blocks at the top bottom, right and left corners, and we can now see that those four lines actually make up a square rotated at 45 degrees and moving round in a clockwise circle. If I now remove those coloured blocks we can finally see that the four lines that were moving around originally were indeed actually a square circling round clockwise. I'm going to put it back to what it was like originally and we can then see what's going on with this phenomenon. Well, this happens as a result of something called motion binding. And again, it's another one of those ways that our brains try to make sense of the world. Don't forget that our eyes just take in light and it's our brains that actually do the seeing. Initially with the lines separate, our brains try to make sense of the movement and try to link the movements together if possible. The corners of the square are covered up and so there's no information to link the movement of all four of the lines. But because the pairs of lines seem to be moving together, our brain can link those movements. By adding the coloured squares, our brains interpret that as them being objects in front of the square behind. And our brains can then link all four lines behind the blocking objects in order to make a square. We can now see that all four lines are connected behind the blocks, and even though we can't see the lines joining together to form a square, our brains can add that in, and the movement is now all joined together, and it starts to make more sense. Finally, by removing the blocks, it's clear to see that indeed, the movement is of a single square moving round clockwise. Although in actual fact, there's no real square there at all, it's just a computer model of one. Interestingly, if I replace the covering blocks and move the camera down a little, the movement becomes disjointed again. Well, it certainly does for me. When I do this, I can no longer see two sides of a box moving round. Now it just becomes two lines moving up and down. I actually don't have an answer for this. I just thought it was an interesting phenomenon. And even once I know what is happening, the illusion still works. Right, on we go to our second and final illusion for today. And here we can see a photograph of a face in black and white. Down half of the face is a semi-transparent red overlay. And if we look at the eye on that side of the image, we can see that the eye looks faintly blue. So what's the illusion here? Well. Firstly, let me turn down the redness until it all disappears. We can now see that the image is monochrome all the way across. And in fact, the blue eyes are really grey. There's a hole in the red overlay corresponding to where the eye is and I'll bring the red overlay back and the blue eye comes back. So what's going on here then? Well, there may be two effects going on. The first is colour constancy and I've spoken about this before. When we look at objects, our brains try to compensate for the perceived colour and intensity of illumination. It's the reason we can still see the colour of objects even under dim illumination or coloured illumination. The left hand side of the image looks like it's under red illumination and our brains try to compensate and where there's a gap in the red, it fills in with what it guesses the colour will be and under red illumination, it would be blue. There may also be some colour adaptation going on here as well. Our retina contains light sensitive cells, and the cells in our retina that are sensitive to different colours of light are called cones. 
and there are three different types of cone. One sensitive to red light, another sensitive to blue light, and a third sensitive to green light. White light stimulates all three cones, and lights of different colours stimulate different cones by differing amounts to give us the wide range of colours that we can see. When cones have been stimulated by a particular coloured light for a while, they kind of lose their stimulation, they sort of get tired and don't send as many impulses back to the brain as they normally would do. White light then will only stimulate the cones that aren't tired anymore. The red overlay stimulates the red cones. When the red cones get tired, the white light coming in from the hole where the eye is only stimulates the blue and green cones now and this results in a bluey green colour being seen. Because our eyes are constantly flicking round, we're constantly moving a tired red part of our retina onto the grey area, and so because the red cones are not being stimulated in that area, we kind of see a blue colour. Out of the two possible explanations, I tend to prefer the colour constancy idea, as the illusion only really works, well for me at least, when the red overlay is quite faint, suggesting that my brain is trying to compensate for the perceived red illumination. But I'm no expert. When the red overlay is turned right up, so now it's just nearly a solid red block, the illusion breaks. But like I said, I'm no expert on this, let me know what you think in the comments. Before we finish, if you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to help my channel grow and maybe try one of my other illusions. If you like optical illusions, I've got seven other videos looking at a wide variety of these illusions. Anyway, that's enough optical illusions for this video, so I guess it's time for me to go now, and until next time, thank you for watching.